We're here in Las Vegas and we thought that would be appropriate because uh, we're going to teach you all about how to deal with hard and clay soil. That's some of the most inquiries I get is about that topic. While we're using Las Vegas as an example, these tips apply to all over the country, all over the world actually. Hard and clay soil can be addressed in some universal ways that we're going to uh, describe today. So as part of our formula here, we're going to ask you to determine the pH of your soil either uh, with uh, your own home test kit or you can send it in professionally. Frequently, hard and clay soil is influenced by the pH and is and the process of improving it is inhibited if you don't address the pH first. I have a lot of experience working with high pH soils. Here in California we have a lot of high pH soils. I've also had quite a few experiences advising people in other parts of the country, um, lots in Virginia and uh, other states where they tend to have low pH soils. If your pH is more than 7.6, we're going to apply Tiger 90 granules, which uh, break down very quickly and will uh, lower the pH. If your pH is less than 5.5, we're going to use organic limestone um, to raise the pH. So if we're within 5.5 to 7.6, we can just start using our products. If we're higher than 7.6, uh, we'll use soil sulfur, and if we're lower than 5.5, we'll use organic limestone. You can pro find links for all the products that I will be mentioning in this video in the description. We want to immediately try to improve the exchange of air and water. We do by that by ripping it or tilling it. And in order to rip or till um, or even double dig it with a spade, uh, you need to get the proper moisture in it. So water it and water it again. Um, we do have a prior video where we show that process of uh, watering it before we tilled. In that case I used some penetrate uh, right before I watered it. So the combination of our penetrate liquid biotiller and repeated waterings, getting that moisture down uh, as deep as possible so our tiller will go down as deep as possible. Uh, that's all a part of the process of, of getting your soil uh, worked up. Our second step is adding concentrated organic matter and we can get right to that if your pH with, is within the proper range, 5.5 to 7.6. If it isn't in the proper range and you're having to try to change it, then uh, it would be best to wait two or three weeks, apply the products, activate them, the ones that are going to lower or raise the pH, and then wait a few weeks and then apply the concentrated organic matter. The concentrated organic matter does a few things all at the same time. It really does what any organic matter does in soil. It's, it's a miracle worker, really. First of all, it feeds some microbes, mainly fungi. Uh, it collects minerals all around the root zones of plants. Those minerals are food for microbes, so it's kind of a magnet for beneficial soil life. And finally, it coats all the soil particles, and that coating does really beneficial things regardless of what kind of soil you have. So if you have clay soil, coating all the soil particles is kind of like using flour when you make pizza dough. It makes it so that um, all of a sudden you can get water and air and, and get an exchange of the two. If it's sand, that coating makes it uh, retain moisture better. So this coating of the soil particles that organic matter does is key. Our own concentrated organic matter is called Optimize and it can be used at very small quantities, three to five pounds uh, per thousand. With the Optimize, it's inexpensive because the rates are so low, and that's uh, going to be a lot easier and more convenient than almost any other product. An alternative, which would work fine also, something like a good quality compost, but the compost would be in a big pile. Uh, but compost would work very effectively. Concentrated organic matter by itself is going to feed and attract uh, microbes and that process over the long term will fundamentally change uh, everything about your soil even without the other products.
So to move on to step three, it would be good to confirm that your attempts to normalize the pH has been successful. And then you can go on to the third step of applying Maximize and uh, Nourish Biosol. Maximize is, has all kinds of minerals in it. That really feeds uh, beneficial uh, microbes in the soil and it has more uh, beneficial microbes including the most famous beneficial microbe, uh, Mycorrhiza. So it's a, a tremendous uh, product to build your soil because it adds life and it adds more food to build on what we started with the Optimize. So as I said, the Optimize will accomplish it, but it will take much longer. So this is a boost for it. And then uh, pretty much the same thing for the Nourish Biosol, although that is that does add something a little different in that it adds uh, macro and micronutrients, which the other products don't so much. The other products are more focused on building the soil whereas the Nourish Biosol will actually feed plants. The general rate for Maximize is eight pounds per thousand square feet, and the general rate for the Nourish Biosol is a minimum of six pounds per thousand square feet. If you were to use, sometimes I recommend, depending on the condition of um, soil and turf and plants that people have, sometimes I'll recommend 10 pounds per thousand. And you can use more than that, but for this purpose, I'm starting with the six pounds per thousand on the Nourish Biosol, eight pounds per thousand on the Maximize. So the, uh, the Nourish Biosol and the Maximize then can go in on step three and you can also begin to plant your plants. Uh, they can go in the backfill or they can go in just on top right around the, all the uh, root zones um, and you can slightly incorporate it. We don't want to mix it deeply but we want all of this nice combination of Nourish Biosol and Maximize to be right there on top. Speaking of the Maximize, one excellent thing to keep in mind since it has mycorrhiza, mycorrhiza is not effective laying on top of the ground because essentially light will kill it. So we want to get it just slightly incorporated. And if we can get it touching the roots of the new plants you're planting or right there touching roots of existing plants, that's where mycorrhiza thrive. If you have any questions about any of this or you're so amazed you don't think it can be true, let us know in the comments. We'll validate it as true or we'll help you as needed. So after step three, which includes all your planting and uh, the application of the Maximize and the Nourish Biosol, then you're going to do a fine grading, get it perfect exactly like you like it and then you're going to apply our penetrate liquid biotiller which is beneficial bacteria along with food for bacteria that food includes things like kelp and saponin and what it does is it does a few things all at the same time one is it is immediately a soil penetrant so without even the benefit of building life in your soil um, the saponin in it will penetrate the soil immediately and soften the soil to some degree. That's on the short term. The long term magic of it is it's food for bacteria and other higher life forms and it goes with the Maximize the Nourish Biosol and the Optimize real well to create this environment where we're building and kickstarting the building of complex soil life and it's that complex soil life that can change everything about your soil more powerfully than if you a lot of uh, gardeners think, well, I need to take out a bunch of soil and put in something different that's lighter. And that's not the intent of, of a powerful uh, recipe like we're providing to you to, today. What we're trying to do is use your existing soil. You're not throwing anything away, but changing your existing soil by infusing it with life, and that life can change everything about it. Now that we have all of these excellent uh, ingredients in the soil, protecting the soil makes those ingredients work much more powerfully. So uh, I recommend you protect it with some type of mulch, one to two inches thick, some type of wood-based mulch works excellently. The exact uh, specifics of it isn't that important. A good quality compost, a good quality green waste. Some people um, have uh, written me and said they use uh, cardboard which isn't very attractive, but is effective. Somehow you want to protect that soil from rain, from sun, conserve moisture. And it's amazing to me how 
much more powerful the products work when we have done that than when we just leave the soil uncovered. From a soil enrichment standpoint, point, it's key. From a weed prevention standpoint, it's important. Um, so I encourage you to uh, do the last step of protecting your soil. You can get all the products that we've mentioned in this video by clicking the links in the description. Our plant of the week was Lantana montevidensis white, which is a white trailing lantana. Grows like crazy in hot areas and blooms like crazy as long as it's warm. And many of you got it. Everyone that got it right will be receiving a bag of blend. So our plant of the week we found in uh, Las Vegas and it's growing here in front of the wind. This is a great example of it uh, looking uh, very lush and green and it's a pretty useful uh, uh, screening shrub. Uh, take a look at it, see if you can identify it. If you can, you get a bag of blend which this plant will love. Speaking of your garden soil, and what's good for it and bad for it. We did a prior video that you might want to watch. Is chemical fertilizer bad for your soil? A lot of interesting information covered there and it's the key to your gardening success.